Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Over the years, I've covered a lot of ways to make water safe to drink. I've shown y'all all sorts of filters, different ways to boil water, and even some chemical treatment methods. And all those have their own advantages and disadvantages, but one method that I haven't covered yet is how to distill water. And being able to do that can be very important in a survival situation, especially one that's longer term. It'll remove contaminants that a lot of other methods just won't. And it's one of the very few long-term solutions that can desalinate salt water. So if you live in a coastal area and don't have a whole lot of fresh water nearby, then being able to distill water could be essential. So today I'll explain how distillation works, why you might need it in an emergency, and how you can do it at home or even off grid using something like this three gallon still from Viver. This is a topic I've been meaning to cover for a while, so when they email me asking if I'd like to take a look at some of their stuff, I requested this still and they were kind enough to send it over. And if you want to check this or any of their other products out, then be sure to use the link in the description below. And you can also get 5% off any of their stuff on their website using this code. But in a nutshell, distillation works by evaporating water, leaving all the bad stuff behind, and then condensing the water vapor back into clean, drinkable water. That process removes most chemicals, heavy metal sediment, biological contaminants, and even dissolved minerals like salt. About the only thing that it doesn't remove is certain volatile organic compounds like benzene and formaldehyde that have an evaporation temperature very close to that of water. However, those can usually be removed using a carbon filter either before or after the water is distilled, but even with that, desalination will still remove a lot more contaminants than things like portable backpacking filters will. Most of those are only designed to remove bacteria and sediment, and they're not going to do anything at all to remove chemicals. Then even the ones that can remove chemicals they aren't able to desalinate water, and most portable desalination methods are one-time use only. But if you have a still like this, you'll be able to desalinate relatively large quantities of water repeatedly long term. This three gallon still that I have here with me is one of their smallest models, but you can get bigger ones. They have five gallon models, eight gallon, a few more, even all the way up to 18 and a half gallons, which is huge. I just wanted something though, a little bit on the smaller side that wouldn't be too hard to store away when we're not using it. This particular still comes with a three gallon stainless steel boiler pot, a cooling bucket with copper tubing already coiled inside of it, and then a thermometer along with a circulation pump and some tubing. It also comes with a fermentation barrel, which you can use if you're going to be doing other things with your still. But since I'm boring and we're only going to be using this for distilling water, we'll just be setting that to the side. The still comes pretty much ready to go, but I did go ahead and buy an additional length of silicone tubing just to make it a little bit easier to collect water after it has been distilled. So the way that this works is that the large pot on the bottom is the boiler pot. It holds the water before it gets distilled. For this demonstration, I'll be using it on an electric stove top just to make showing everything a little bit easier. Of course, if you're needing to distill water in an emergency, you may not be able to use nice electric appliances, but you can use this still on things like propane and butane camp stoves and even rocket stoves that use natural materials like sticks. Uh, since the pot stainless steel, it shouldn't have any big issues if you use it over an open flame. You just want to be careful if you're using something like a rocket stove, since steel can warp if temperatures get crazy high. Just keep an eye on it and don't let water levels drop too low. But once the water starts to heat up, it'll eventually turn into steam. And when it does, it'll travel up this copper pipe over here and back down through the coil. And as it travels through the coil, it's cooled by the water inside of the cooling bucket. Now, if all you have is the water inside of this bucket, it's gonna heat up pretty quickly and it won't do nearly as good of a job condensing the steam. After a certain point, you'll probably be able to see steam coming out of your still rather than water. And that's why I asked for the model that comes with a circulation pump. You can place the pump inside of a larger container like a cooler that has cold water inside of it. It'll then circulate cold water through the cooling bucket 
which will help keep the condenser coil colder for a lot longer. If you have ice, you can use that, but if we're in a longer term situation, you could use a small solar power option to run a 12 volt refrigerator and use that to freeze reusable ice blocks like the ones I have here. And you can also use your power station to run your pump as well. But once you have everything put together and figure out the correct speed for your pump, everything should work just fine. So first up, I'm gonna fill my pot with water. And when I do this, I'm only actually gonna fill it up around a half or two thirds of the way full. And the reason for that is that, you know, when you boil water, of course, water's gonna come up. I don't want it to overflow and risk damaging or anything or flooding the stove top, anything like that. And one good thing about distillation versus other methods is that you don't necessarily have to worry about cleaning a lot of the debris out of the water before you try to distill it because that distillation process is going to remove that anyway. You compare that to a regular like filter type thing, whether it's a countertop unit or some sort of backpacking setup. And you do need to try to pre-filter that as much as possible because you're going to gum up your filter if you don't. But with this, I mean, you know, it might be a good idea to try to get rid of some of them. But you're not going to hurt the steel pot if there's some sediment or whatever in here. Just clean it out real good before you use it the next time. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and put the lid back on. And go ahead and clamp everything down. Then I already have my water pump down inside of this cooler here, and I'm just gonna connect this hose to that bottom valve that's connected to my pump. And then I'm going to connect the other hose to the top one. Next up, I'm gonna turn on the pump. Okay, y'all, when you turn on your circulation pump, if you have one, be sure that you actually open the valves first. <laughs> Otherwise, ain't nothing gonna happen. You could burn your pump out or burn your pump up if you're not careful. So I'm just gonna let the pump go ahead and fill up the cooling bucket. And while that is happening, I'm also gonna turn on the stovetop. I'm gonna turn it up to high, just like when we would boil water. We're gonna give this a little bit of time and see how things go. But as you can see, I have my still here on the stovetop. I have it connected to the pump and water starting to flow from the cooling bucket back down into the cooler, which is what we want. And then this long tube here is connected to a stainless steel stock pot, and that is where the distilled water is gonna end up after it goes through the distillation process. Now, y'all might be able to hear a, we will say duck-like sound coming from this thing, and what you can do is you can kind of play with this valve here to kind of help reduce that. Now, when you do that, you want to make sure that you don't close it to the point where the cooling bucket overflows because that would be bad. But you can kind of play with that valve in addition to adjusting the speed for your pump. So as you can see, the water is coming through the, um, the condenser coil in the cooling bucket and we're starting to have water come through our tube down into our stock pot. So it seems like it is working as it should right now. So we've been at this for almost an hour now. And as you can see, our pot is starting to fill with water. And a couple of things I learned through this process is it has taken me a little bit of work to figure out the balance between how fast my pump should be going and how far open or shut I should have that valve. It's something I've kind of had to babysit a little bit if I did not want to be dealing with the aforementioned duck sound. But that's, I think that's just something that'll come with experience and knowing your gear a little bit better. And another thing is that if you're going to be using the circulation pump, which I highly recommend because otherwise that water inside of the cooling pot is just going to get 
very hot very quickly. You want to fill up your container, cooler, whatever it may be with as much water as possible because it's still going to heat up. This water has gotten pretty hot even with these ice packs in here with the water circulating the entire time like that. I, I don't even want to keep my finger in there for too long. The water's just getting so hot, but I mean, that's what happens. Oops. I'll close that a little bit. But, I mean, overall, the system seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. The only issue I had with the system itself is that nut right there in the middle, right where the, um, the water comes out. I did have a little bit of a leak, but, I mean, I... Just before you start, make sure that everything's nice and tight. I did not do that. But anyway, it all seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. Now, there are some important things that you need to know about distilling, especially if you plan to use it in an emergency. First, it takes a long time to distill water. Depending on the size of your setup and what you're using as your heat source, it could take several hours to get one gallon of water. Second, distilling is going to use a lot of fuel. That kind of just comes with the territory if you're having to heat something for long periods of time. So if you're going to rely on this, be sure that your fuel stockpiles can handle it. I'd strongly recommend having something that can burn natural materials rather than just trying to rely on fuel-based camp stoves. That's part of the reason why I went with this smaller model. I figured that a three-gallon pot will take a lot less time and fuel to heat up than something bigger like a nine-gallon unit would. And since it uses so much fuel, we're probably not going to be using distillation as our primary water purification method, but it's still good to have. If you live in like a coastal area, I think something like this is essential. And even if you're not, you can still use it as a backup if you have to purify water that's just a little bit too much for your regular filter to handle, or you need to distill water for medical purposes. A lot of things like humidifiers need distill water, and something like this would give you a long-term supply of that. Then, since distillation removes pretty much everything, it also removes minerals, including those that your body needs. Those include calcium, magnesium, and potassium, among others. So if you're going to rely on distilled water long term, you're going to need ways to replace as many of those as you can. And to do that, you could use like electrolyte powder, unrefined sea salt, or mineral drops. You could also mix your distilled water with other water sources like rainwater or spring water to help balance those things out. So at the end of the day, being able to distill water is a useful thing to have in your prepper toolkit. Like all the other water purification methods, it does have its positives and negatives, but in some situations, it may be the only thing that'll work. Once again, I'd like to thank Viver for sending us one of their stills to take a look at today. If you want to check it out or anything else that they have, be sure to use the link in the description below. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.